Okay, so you, you're talking about so-called um, shadows or digital twins. Uh, Metadata uh, about data. Yeah, yeah so, so. I know that's, that uh, certain companies populate their CRM system with, with guesses about their customers, which are extremely accurate, but it's based on statistical models. So that, that is the kind of thing you're talking about. Excellent. So yeah. Cloudio probably will do this and this. Exactly, correct. So there's a predictability on the fact that and, me and, as a and person... And some companies yeah. are saying, well, that's not personal data, because that's data about... Anyone, generically. Fantasy, yeah, fantasy Cloudio. People Correct. like Cloudio. People like but Cloudio. Not Cloudio. Exactly. That's a good thing. And I, I love but the fact is, that isn't personal data anyway, because it's connected to. <laughs> so, so uh, you're rich and famous. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to be that. But yeah. No. But then you will have fake persona. Yep. So is that a digital twin, or what do, what would you call it? Uh, digital twin would actually be an interesting name for it. So, um, I'm actually having at least three personas that I'm aware of. Uh, those guys with uh, white coats and that's giving pills tells me I have more, but most of them, three, three personas. And one is a person I am with myself. Yeah. One is a person you see now, an yeah. external person that's out talking and everything. And one is my online persona. Yeah. I use whenever I, I have to divulge any type of private information. Yeah. GDPR defines uh, personal information as uh, specific information connected directly or indirectly to a person that is alive. And this information uh, must be um, uh, a one-side collection. IP addresses is a very good example. On the internet, your IP address is never connected to a person. It always goes to Telia, and then Telia has an internal database who you are, but you don't get that sort of on the next level. Actually, they don't know who you are. They know who owns the subscription. Yeah, but they don't, have, they don't expose that unless, because it's private data from them. Mm -hmm. But in an intranet, the same IP address uh, has a connection directly to you. So that's why it's, and I always get this question from IT people. Is an IP address uh, a personal data? And I say, it depends. It's on the internet, it's not, because it's a company behind it. But it's on the intranet, nine out of 10 it is, because intranets keep track on when you log on and you, you, they have track on you as a person. Mm -hmm. So going back to this, uh, there's the virtual people here. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no law to protect that and protect them, because the law only protects entities. They don't protect the, 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 meta, the, the metadata of entities. But, but when they're saying in their database that Claudio is very much like digital Claudio, aren't they saying everything about you isn't then that connected to you? As long as they don't use the, 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 in their database or in the consent the actual identity of Claudio, my personal number or my name and address, so you can sort of clearly no, stipulate I, 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 me. Sorry, I, I think you're not getting this. Oh, so they, they have, they have a, a, like a, a fantasy person, Digital Claudio. Yep. And Digital Claudio has a number of attributes. Yes. And, and they are confident, 99% confident, that actual Claudio is exactly like the Claudio. Yeah. No, strictly legal. Strictly legal, then no, it's not data. It doesn't combine within the area of data protection because it has to be a, a person that is alive. So strictly, from a legal sort of interpretation point of view, no. So guesses not. about you are not personal data, only facts about you. Correct, correct. Uh, again, there is another law coming what about on board. incorrect data? Well, that's the whole point of GDPR, uh, that incorrect data uh, and that's, that's the whole idea behind this, and that's what's before in Swedish with Pool and Data Lagen, is that that's the whole remedy. We want to avoid people getting wrong data. Mm -hmm. uh, so the whole idea behind this protection on privacy is that you should always be accurate about somebody's personal information. So inaccurate data is actually part of the reason that these legal frameworks exist. Do you have different email addresses, different devices, different carriers? 
Uh, I'm not that paranoid yet. I have different email addresses. Uh, most important when it comes to email addresses is that I have one email address for register my account on sites that I use for the logon, and I have one or more email addresses for communication. And that's very important. When it comes to privacy, and we talk about privacy by design, a lot of companies implement that you could get a reset of your password to your email address. Meaning that if someone takes control of my email, they actually take control of all those sites and accounts as well. And that's a terrible practice. So, uh, so I use one account for registering where I could get password reset and another one for communicating. Uh, does that work with Amazon? Well, sort of, uh, because what, when I have to communicate with those uh, yeah. products, from it, of course I have to use my uh, the, the account I communicate with. But I don't I, I whitelist all the comp uh, all the sites I'm expecting information from, and everything else is blocked. Yeah. So I don't get any spam to that email address. So it's from that point of view very secure. So do you use several accounts for? Instagram, Facebook, and so on. Uh, actually, for uh, when it comes to Facebook, Instagram, I'm using one same account, but I have a social media uh, account that's specific that I don't I don't involve social media in my purchase. Yeah. Uh, correct, correct. So, so but Claudia, what would, what would that do for the big data industry? Mm. The same thing that's done for the the, the current market of uh, cloud. The reason that American clouds have sold so poorly in the European has been because there are no European clouds. You're well aware of the fact that GDPR is very strict about um, having the data within the European Union. It's a very sort of... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so but, but they have data centers, even here in Sweden. No, they, they've done that afterwards. I mean, when, when GDPR came in force, uh, a good example is Microsoft. They only had, as I understood it, in 2015, was the time that they initiated the first German uh, sort of data center. 2018, no, they had no, to no, implement. No, sorry, sorry, no, no, no. The, 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 they had uh, Azure data centers in Netherlands, uh, UK, Ireland, uh, much before that. But what you're what you're referring to in 2015 was when they gave uh, they created an Azure data center that is not operated by Microsoft. Correct. by about the German company. German company. So it is not in jurisdiction Correct. of American companies. Thank you. That's exactly what I was saying. So that was the first time that was initiated. And then in 2018, now finally Microsoft has one in Stockholm and one in Umeå now that they're going to be operated by an independent uh, body to confirm and confine within the GDPR. So big data is going to have the same kind of impact on, on, on when it comes to collecting cookies and administering cookies. At the moment, there are a lot of uh, companies um, uh, making profit and uh, capitalizing on the idea of cookies. And here's where the law comes down to. The law has sort of two sort of balances. One is to protect, and the other one is, of course, to uh, enable. Exactly. So, and here is where it comes. And you have to. Uh, interesting point of view is that one of the basics of the European community is that we should have the free movement of goods, services, and uh, money. People. Exactly. So, how does that sort of uh, caters within this sort of uh, point of view? And the, the but but, but I, I think the problem is that if there is no protection, people will never trust the system, and 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 the value will not be generated, because people will give bogus answers to questionnaires, because they know it will be misused, right? So how common is this to do things like that? I would say very uncommon. Uh, when I'm out uh, doing user training. Um, when you do user training for companies, uh, we have seen statistics that at first people understand it and they stop doing the bad practice and about three, four months later they are back to do, do the same practice again at work. What you really need to change is how do people actually behave at home with their private information. So when I do user training for companies, I mix uh, what they should do at home, what you do at work and actually show how this works together. So we talk a lot about how to change uh, the way they should mail or use their email address, how they should make sure they have backups on their private uh, phones and everything. And what I've seen is that that actually changed the way they're behaving uh, at the company from security. So you have to change the behavior of yeah. the person, yeah. not only in the company perspective, but in the life perspective. In the life perspective, but mainly because 
we used to have a lot more security at the company and less at home, but that changed quite a bit. Look at, look at how operating system have changed and the virus have changed. All type of security problems, they're no more built in in the operating system. Of course, there's a lot of add-ons, but your home network is quite often a lot more secure than you have uh, at work nowadays. Mainly also due to bad practice, old security habits at work, old school security people. So, but it should, we, we talk a lot about changing behavior patterns. Uh, I'm a behavioral scientist in the first place. So th that's what I've been focused on my way of <laughs>
more or less mature. <laughs> Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting there. Getting yeah. There. Uh, I heard that young people they use different Facebook accounts, different Instagram accounts uh, for different purposes. So they have their friends, their real close friends. They have one address for that, and then they have a public address for sharing the good things, mm. and then they have another address where they share the real things. Mm. Yeah, that's the same. This is another way of looking at this different type of personas that you spoke about before. Uh, this is actually common practice, not not only for youngsters, but the same thing when you are doing a political propaganda, especially in the far right wing, uh, where we see a lot of that. You can actually see the different type of behaviors if you join different type of uh, humor groups where you can find those type of interesting jokes, where. You have those always pushing jokes that are almost at the limit or at the limit, mm -hmm. especially within a political agenda. And you see those accounts getting blocked, but you, you see that they have several accounts so they could force do this. And the usage of social media to push information into our closet, for, for those of you who yes, you use Facebook and Instagram and that uh, as a way of life, or included in their, included very much in their life. This information gets pushed directly, and, and that's that's a real, real danger. Uh, so that's the Cambridge Analytica. For example, those who are actually doing it uh, on, on purpose. But this is a, this is a com I would say this is a common practice that are trained for those who are actually support supposed to push information. It could be those troll factories, but you see the practice of doing it is also spread within. Uh, political organizations. Sometimes companies that use it, this is where you should post things. And any company today has their influencers, uh, persons like me, that they send information that this is what you're supposed to push on your LinkedIn account or uh, your Twitter account, etc. Um, it happens that I, when I receive that, but this is a good thing, I could push that. But I would say in at least, at least 98 cases, 100. When I see this information, I don't push it because it's not relevant for what type of information I would like to push.